Kia ora koutou. Today we'll look at a nice application of depth first search to so-called topological sorting and we'll see how DFS can easily detect the presence of cycles in digraphs. So digraphs are often used to display precedence or dependence relationships. Let's consider a toy example. Suppose nodes are items of clothing and an arc from item U to item V means you need to put on item U before you can put on item V. Then you might have part of a dressing graph that looks like this. So here's five items of clothing, a jersey, a singlet, a raincoat, shoes and socks. And you need to put on a singlet before you put on your jersey. And you'll clearly need to put your singlet on before you put on your raincoat. And so on, you need to put your socks on before you put your shoes on. So our aim when getting dressed is to put things on in the right order. So we choose an order for all the items we need to make sure that any specific relationships shown in this digraph are respected. So one ordering we might try is singlet first, then jersey, then raincoat, then socks, then shoes. And notice that if I draw the arcs on this graph, they all go in the same direction from left to right down the ordering. So the idea of a topological sort or a topological order is basically this. We place the nodes in an order from left to right. So that if we perform actions in that order, we will obey all the precedence relationships that we have given in the original graph. So if we draw the nodes out in our topological order, then all the arcs will go in the same direction. So the formal definition looks like this. So a topological sort of a digraph G is a linear ordering of the nodes of G such that if node U comes before node V in the ordering, then we don't have an arc that goes from V back to U. So VU is not in the arc set of G. We also call this a topological order or a linear order. So let's look at a slightly more complex example. So here's a digraph with five nodes. Let's see if we can find a topological order. The first node in the order must have no arcs coming into it, since we only allow arcs coming from nodes that precede it in the ordering. The only candidate here is uh, node four, with no arcs coming in, so let's put that first in the ordering. Next, we can ha only have a node where the only in neighbor is four, right? Anything that comes after here can have um, only arcs coming in from four. And so we've got a couple of candidates here, two and three, let's choose three, say. Now we can choose any node with uh, three or four pointing into it. Let's say one, then one, three or four, let's say two, and finally zero. So I, I claim this is a topological ordering. We can check this by drawing the arcs on this digraph and making sure they all point in the same direction. And yes, it's clear that they all point in the same direction, so this is a topological ordering. So the kind of heuristic arguments we use to find the uh, topological sort here can be formal formalized to find a topological sort where it exists. But let's first think about where a topological sort does not exist for a graph. Clearly when we've got two nodes U and V with an arc going from U to V and an arc going back from V to U, there is no way we can order U and V so that all arcs will go in the same direction. So that's not surprising as you know, these arcs mean U must come before V and V must come before U. So there's an inconsistency in our precedence or dependency relationships. More generally, any cycle in a digraph will prevent us from finding a topological sort. So recall that a cycle is a sequence of nodes connected by arcs where the only repeated nodes are the first and the last in that sequence. So it's like a path, but it starts and finishes at the same place in the graph. So a digraph with no cycles is known as a DAG, which stands for Directed Acyclic No Cycles Graph. And we can prove the following result. A digraph has a topological order if and only if it is a DAG. So how do we prove this result? Well, clearly, if a digraph has a topological order, it has no cycle. 
since we can draw it out in a line with all the arrows going in one direction. If it had a cycle, we would have, it, have to have at least one arrow going the other way, which it doesn't. So we only need to prove that if G is acyclic, it has a topological sort. We'll start by assuming that G is acyclic. So let's assume that G is acyclic and we'll end up showing that G has a topological ordering. We'll show first that there is a node in G that is a source. How will we do that? Well, we'll consider the reverse digraph GR and show that GR has a sink. Notice that a sink in GR will be a source in the original digraph G. So how will we show that the reverse digraph has a sink? Well, we'll assume that it doesn't and we'll work towards a contradiction. So GR has no sink, so that means if we start a walk from any node, we can always continue that walk as long as we want because every node has an out neighbor, as it's not a sink. That means we can walk for at least n plus one steps where n is the order of g. So if our walk of it is of length n plus one, we must have visited one of the nodes at least twice, as there are only n nodes. That means that our walk contains a cycle. That is, the reverse of g contains a cycle, so g contains a cycle. That's a contradiction, so that means that our assumption that GR has no sync must be incorrect. Hence, the reverse digraph has a sync and the original digraph G has a source. Okay, so now that we've established there is a source in G, we can grab that source, call it U, and put it at the start of our ordering, like this, and then we can consider the digraph G minus the node U and any arcs that come out of it. And notice that that must also be a DAG, right? It's definitely a digraph, and seeing all we've done is take away one node and any arcs that come out of it, we kind of created a cycle, so it must still be a DAG. So the same argument applies here, it must have a source. So if this new source wasn't a source in the original graph G, then the only arcs that would have come into it would have been from our original source U. So we can safely put this new source, call it U1, next in line, and so on, each time deleting the source we find, reducing the size of the digraph by one node, and adding it to our order, so slowly building up an order, source by source, if you like. So we'll end up with and ordering u, u1, u2, up to u n minus 1, where each of these nodes was chosen because it was a source that had zero in degree. And that gives us a topologi topological ordering that we're after. So this method of proof gives us a way of finding a topological sort called zero in degree sorting, which we can roughly summarize as follows. So simply, we have uh, the zero in degree sorting algorithm, which finds us a topological sort, looks like this. We start with the digraph G, and we'll continue until we've removed every node from G and placed it in our ordering. We'll find node U, which is a source in G. We'll place U, the next, in our topological sort. We'll remove U from G. That is, we'll remove the node and any arcs emanating from it. At each iteration, the node set of G gets one smaller, and so eventually this will stop after n iterations. You can show that you can implement this algorithm by keeping an up-to-date list of all n degrees of nodes throughout this algorithm, and that the running time in that case will be uh, big theta uh, n plus m. It turns out, though, that we already have a theta n plus m algorithm for finding a topological sort of G, and that is using DFS. So let's look at a couple of results now to see how this is done. First, we'll prove this result here, that G is acyclic is equivalent to, so if and only if, there are no back arcs 
when a DFS is run on G. Suppose we've then performed a DFS on G and we found some back arc UV. What does it mean that UV is a back arc? Well that means that U is a descendant of V in the search tree, so there's a path from V down to U in the search tree and it goes that way. It also means we've got this back arc going from U back up to V. So that means we can find the path from V directly to U and from U back to V so we can find a cycle in G. Thus if G is acyclic then there are no back arcs in G. How about the other direction? Suppose we have some cycle in G. Let's say the cycle looks like this, goes that way, and during our search the first node we encounter on that cycle is V. Then clearly everything in the cycle is on the same search tree as V, and indeed everything in that cycle will be a descendant of V in that search tree. Now when we get to the last node on that cycle, say U, we will at some point explore the arc UV that completes that cycle. This will be a back arc since V is an ancestor of U in the search tree. Hence um, UV is a back arc. So that shows that if G is acyclic there are no back arcs and that if there are no back arcs then G is acyclic as needed. Okay, so that shows us uh, whether a topological sort exists for G. We can run a DFS on it. If we find no back arcs, a topological sort exists for G. But what is that ordering? Well, the following result tells us. It turns out if we list the nodes of G in reverse order of DFS finishing times, so what we were calling the done times in our algorithm, then we have a topological sort. Of G. We prove this by considering any arc UV. So we've just shown that UV is not a back arc since G is acyclic. So there are three cases. It's either a forward arc, a cross arc, or a tree arc. In any of these cases, we've shown in the lecture on DFS that done V is less than done U. In the ordering of nodes by reverse order of done times, U comes before V and hence we have a topological order as UV was an arbitrary arc and that completes the proof. So let's have a look at an example. So here's the digraph we looked at before. Let's run a quick DFS on this and see what the order of um, done times are and we'll write those out in reverse to get a new topological order. So if I write the scene time first followed by a slash followed by the done time we can get through this reasonably quickly. Okay, so we can start our DFS from any node. Typically we'd start at zero. That, in this example, it's gonna be a little bit boring, so let's start from three, say, but it works if we start from any node. So let's start from three. So we have a scene time of three, then we visit our out neighbor, let's say one, and from one, we'll visit its only out neighbor zero. Zero has no out neighbors, so we'll finish with that. Then we'll finish with one. We'll go to the other out neighbor over here of three. That's got no more white out neighbors, so we'll finish with that. And finally, we've finished with three. We haven't visited four yet, so we'll visit four at time eight, and we'll be done with it at time nine. So now if we simply list the node, in the reverse order of the done times, we start with four, then three, then two, then one, and then zero. And that, you can check, is a topological order for this graph here. Finally, I'd like to finish with this definition of the girth of a graph. So the girth of an undirected graph is the length of the smaller cycle in that graph. If G is a digraph, then the girth of G is simply the girth of the underlying graph of G. 
Sometimes we'll talk about another concept called the directed girth of a digraph, which is simply the length of the shortest directed cycle in the digraph. This term is somewhat unusual and may not be used elsewhere in the literature. This small digraph here has underlying graph like this, which clearly has a cycle of length three. So the girth of the directed graph here is three, whereas the directed girth is the length of the shortest cycle in the digraph, which is of length two, so the directed girth is two.